Hello students and welcome to another calculus video. In this video, we're going to be tackling a free response question. No calculators are permitted in this video. And you're gonna notice that there is a lot of writing that you're going to have to be doing. So go ahead and take a stretch and let's get started. So as promised, there's a lot to do in this problem. First, notice that we're given a particle function and we have p of t, t to the third minus 4t squared minus 3t plus 1. We know it's measured in feet and t is measured in seconds. So let's start at this first question where it says find the average velocity on the interval from 1 to 2. We want to make sure that we give correct units. Well, how do we find average velocity? So in order to do that, you just want the secant line using the position function. So that's going to be p of 1 minus p of 2 over 1 minus 2. All right, so in my denominator, I'm getting negative 1. My numerator, p of 1, well, that's 1 minus 4 minus 3 plus 1, which is negative 5. And then p of 2, well, that's going to be 8. Uh, t squared, that's 4, so minus 16 minus 6 plus 1. And that's going to come out to be negative 13, so plus 13. And I get 8 over negative 1, which is negative 8. But I still need correct units. And so since in my numerator, I have position, which is measured in feet. And in my denominator, I have time, which is measured in seconds. So this is going to be negative 8 feet per second right there. All right, so now moving on to part B, on what intervals of time is the particle moving to the left? We want to justify our answer there. So let's go ahead and think about this. In part B, we know that the particle moves to left when V of t is less than zero. And we know that V of t is equal to P prime of t. So let's go ahead and figure out what P prime is. So V of t is going to be equal to 3t squared minus 8t minus 3. Well, in order to see when it's less than zero, we're going to have to make our handy dandy sign chart. So let's set this equal to zero and let's factor it. So three times negative three is negative nine. I need two values that come out to be negative eight, um, which is negative nine and positive one. The one right there, divide that by three. And so I get three T plus one and I get T minus three. That's where it's equal to zero. So I know that t equals negative one third and t equals three. Okay, well, we can already ignore one of these values because negative one third is outside of the domain. Remember, time can only be positive. So as we're looking at this and I'm making my sign chart over here, I'm going from zero. We know that we can go up to three and then everything greater than that is going to be the exact same uh, sign. All right, so using the, the factor 4 and 3t plus 1, t minus 3, let's go ahead and look at our sign. So if I have a, a, a value between 0 and 3, let's throw in a 1. So I get a positive and I get 1 minus 3, which is negative. So all of this from 0 to 3 comes out to be negative. And then let's choose a value greater than 3, something like 5 here. So uh, 5 times 3 plus 1, I get positive value. And 5 minus 3 is also positive. So all of this comes out to be positive. So let's go back and uh, think about our question. On what intervals of time is the particle moving to the left? Well, we know we've already stated that the particle moves left when V of t is negative, is less than zero. And now we can say that V of t is less than zero on the interval from zero to three. All right, so now let's look at part C there. So using appropriate units, we wanna find P prime and P double prime of three. We want to describe what's happening to the motion of the particle at t equals 3 seconds. Okay, so here in part C, let's go ahead and label it. Normally, when you're doing free response questions, you'll get a lot more space in here. All right, so I want to say, okay, we're finding p prime of 3, which is v of 3. So that's equal to p prime of 3. We already have v above. So uh, let's find p prime of 3. So that's 3 squared uh, times 3. And I'm just... I want to note that I am just looking right there, right there. So uh, 3 squared is 9 times 3, that's 27, minus 8 times 3, so minus uh, 24. So that's going to be 3 minus 3, which is 0. So p prime comes out to be 0. And now we need our second derivative. 
So we're going to say that the acceleration equals to the second derivative at t. And our second derivative is going to be 6t minus 8. So let's find a of 3. So then that's 18 minus 8, which is going to be 10. All right, so since p prime is 0, that means that the, the particle is stopped. It has no acceleration. But a of 3 is equal to 10. So really what that's telling us is that the particle is momentarily stopped but is actually changing directions because velocity is zero, but acceleration is non-zero. All right, so hopefully you remember that from one of our previous lessons where we were talking about the connections between velocity and acceleration. So now we want to go on and look at part D, question D here. What is the maximum velocity on the interval from t equals one to t equals three? We wanna show our analysis again. Okay, so let's think about this, maximum velocity. In order to find the max of a function, we need to find where that derivative of the function equals zero. So we have velocity, we found velocity in part B, so we need to set our acceleration equal to zero because acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So we're gonna say um, V prime of T equals A of T, which we know is equal to six T minus eight. So now we're gonna set this equal to zero and we're gonna get t equals to eight over six or four thirds. So now think back to the extreme value theorem. We know that maximums can happen at endpoints or at points where the derivative is equal to zero. So we need to check all three of these. So I'm going to find, all right, so we're looking for it on the interval from, it says one to three. So we're gonna to need to find v of one we're gonna need v of three and v of four thirds. All right, so v of one, I think we found that earlier. Yes, so actually, no, we did not. So v of one, uh, that's gonna be uh, three minus eight minus three. So three minus eight is negative five minus three, that's gonna be negative eight meters per second. Are we in meters per second? Feet per second, sorry, feet per second, all right? Uh, so now let's find V of four thirds. So then uh, four thirds squared, that's gonna be 16 over nine. Three over nine is one third. So I get 16 over three and then minus eight times four thirds. So then that's gonna be 24 thirds. So minus 24 over three and then minus three, which is nine thirds. All right, so if I Simplify all that, subtract all the way across, I get 16 minus 24, which is negative nine, minus nine, which is negative 18 thirds. Actually, um, now that I think about it, I do have a tiny mistake. So four thirds times eight, four times eight is actually 32 thirds. All right, so let's try this again. 16 minus 32 is negative 16. And um, negative 16 minus nine is negative 25 thirds. And if I were to kind of estimate this, this is going to be three times eight. So that's eight. So I'm gonna say 8.33 repeating. And it's negative feet per second. And just to keep that in mind about, okay, we wanna find the most negative, or we wanna find the greatest velocity. Now let's substitute three into my velocity function. So three squared is nine, three times nine is 27. Um, minus eight times three, so minus 24, minus three, and all that comes out to be zero feet per second. Notice here the question doesn't ask what is the greatest speed, which is the absolute value of all of these. It's asking us what is the greatest velocity. And velocity takes into account direction negative versus positive. So the largest number here is actually zero. So we're going to say that max velocity on zero to three is zero feet per second, which occurs at t equals three seconds. And I know that second part where it's occurring isn't part of the question, but that happens that that question kind of pops up a lot throughout free response questions, so I just kind of threw it in there. All right, and after what has feels like it's been a long ordeal, we're down to our final question, 
where it says find the total distance that the particle moves on the interval from one to five. We wanna show and explain our analysis. All right, so I want to think about this because we've done some work here already. And um, in order to find where the particle is, the total distance, we need to take into account where it's turning. And so we know that the particle is turning when t equals three. So well, what, what do I want to do here? Well, I want to chunk it off from one to three and three to five, and then add up those distances, those net distances. So let's say that the total distance equals P of one minus P of three, the absolute value of that, plus the absolute value of P of three minus P of five, the absolute value of that. All right, so P of one, I get negative five, and then P of three, I get minus negative 17, plus um, P of three, I got negative 17, and minus P of five, I got 11. All right, so five, negative five plus 17 comes out to be 12, and because it's the absolute value of that, and then negative 17 minus 11 is 28, because it's the absolute value of that, and I add those two values together and I get 40. And what are our units? Well, those are measured in feet in this problem. And I know here that it is a lot of calculations. And you're like, Mr. Hernandez, how am I going to have time to answer all of this if I'm doing um, these free response questions during the exam? And the thing is, you just have to really read these questions. These questions pop up all the time. You have to read these questions and know exactly what you need to do, what calculations you need to make. And you have to do those, you have to make those decisions quickly in order to get through the free response questions efficiently. Of course, if you're not getting any of the same values that I got here, or if you're confused on how I answer some of these questions, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this is Mr. Hernandez Teachers.